we have uh, John MacArthur. Uh, he is uh, a, uh, a legend, if you will, in uh, the ministry business. Uh, he is the pastor of Grace Community Church, and I think he is going to be even more legendary uh, because of the steps that he is taking now. He is in California, and he has deemed that church is essential. And I want to play his opening uh, this past Sunday. This is what he said to his, uh, his congregation. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to welcome you to the uh, Grace Community Church Peaceful Protest. <laughs> welcome to the program, John MacArthur. How are you, sir? Well, I'm, I'm very fine. I'm chuckling when I hear that because we normally begin with prayer. That was a little bit of a different approach to start a service. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But it is in California, it is crazy that your, your First Amendment right to gather and, and have the services that are essential, I believe, to the soul of each individual and soul of our nation that's not okay but if you if you decide to engage in a peaceful protest which looks an awful lot like a riot you're fine yeah that's absolutely right it's the hypocrisy of it is well i guess you couldn't even call it hypocrisy it's just blatant double talk uh because they're they're out front with it all so we we are um targeted there's no question about it um, I go back to the fact that 364 babies are aborted in California every day. We lead the nation. We'll have about 140,000 abortions this year. There's no moral high ground. The governor basically had a decree uh, a year or so ago in which he invited people who couldn't get an abortion in another state to come to California. You could get it here mm -hmm. and funded by tax money. So there's no moral high ground. Um, there, There's just... Uh, what we feel is a targeting of churches uh, based on fear, based on statistics that are not believable. Um, you know, just before we move on from abortion, it was Kamala Harris, now the vice presidential pick, that actually uh, uh, was, began the litigation against the reporter that did the uncovering of the selling of baby body parts by Planned Parenthood. That that was Kamala Harris in California. Um, so so John, um, you you are now standing up. And did you ever think that you might in this country be put in a position of someday following the Dietrich Bonhoeffer kind of path, where you go to jail for what you believe? Um. You know, it, it was a reality, and increasingly so. Uh, I've been at Grace Church 51 years. Um, wow. it, life was fairly benign a uh, half a century ago in terms of the thought of persecution. But in the last 10 or 15 years, um, th this has been coming. It's been coming because of the corruption of the university system, which eventually, eventually puts everybody in leadership who has been jaded and sold an anti-God, anti-Christian, anti-American ideology. So there's an inevitability to it. Uh, one way to understand this, Glenn, and I don't know what you're going to say tonight. You kind of teased a little bit on that. I don't know what you're going to say mm -hmm. tonight, but I, I believe it already, even though I don't know what it is. Because the you can just see the signs. Just a simple way that I look at this from a biblical standpoint the human race has fallen. We know we're all sinners because everybody dies, and the wages of sin is death, and the soul that sins will die. So death is the evidence of sin. So how does God manage to cause flourishing in, the, in this massive collision of sinners on the way to death? He built into society four restraints. The first one is the law of God written in the heart. Part of being human is having the knowledge of right and wrong, and it's in the heart. And then God gave a mechanism called the conscience, which is activated when you disobey that law in the heart. That's why people feel guilty. That's, that's why there's deep fear, anxiety, depression, uh, sometimes panic attacks over people's sinful behavior. That's a mechanism that God gives them so they don't continually destroy the soul. The second mechanism, by the way, the law of God in the heart has a weapon. The weapon is conscience. The second mechanism is the family. 
and the father and the mother. And believe it or not, the weapon is the rod. The Bible talks about bear the rod and spoil the child. What that means is that there is loving discipline for misbehavior so that misbehavior has consequences. The third is the government, and Romans 13 basically says uh, the government has a sword, that's their weapon, to punish evildoers and protect those who do good. And the fourth restraint in society uh, are the people of God, the church, that are salt and light, salt as a quiet influence, light as a blazing declaration of truth. So, uh, given those four restraints, um, am I surprised that basically the law written in the heart has been completely overturned and replaced with a corrupt, perverted law. And if your conscience gives you any trouble, you need to silence your conscience because you you don't need to take uh, any blame for anything you do. You shouldn't have any shame. So the conscience and the law of God in the heart has been devastated systematically through the sexual revolution, homosexual revolution, and and all the other stuff that comes with it, the Me Too movement, social justice, everything. Then the family. The family is the next barrier, the next restraint that allows humanity to flourish. And what's happened to the family? Just complete devastation to the family to the degree that there is law being made to give some kind of normalcy to transgender people. So the family's under assault. Next comes the government, defund the police. You have a generation of people milling around in the streets, destroying everything, because there never have been any consequences to their behavior uh, as they grew up. So now we want to get rid of the police. Well, who's next? There's only one institution left, and that's the church. The police have a sword. The, the father and mom have a rod. The law of God in the heart has a conscience. The church has the truth. That's the most deadly weapon of all to a world that wants to run from God and and do everything that the sinful heart longs to do. So silencing the church is part of it. So did I expect that it would come in my lifetime? Probably. Probably. Um, I, I don't know that this is something that has come as fast as it appears. I think it's it's been growing for decades. No, I think it's, uh, you know, you, you've you never gone in for a prostate exam, and you're 70. Well, all of a sudden, you're, you've are you got a month to live. Well, you could have seen it coming, but you didn't look. And many of us just turned away, and we didn't look. Uh, and, uh, and so we didn't realize we were being rotted from the inside out. Um, you know, I, I, I've talked to a lot of people, and I said, you know, it would actually give me a lot of hope if, if Jesus were coming, uh, because I know he could fix it and he will when he comes. But I also wouldn't be surprised if this this was the beginning of the end of days, if you will. Um, uh, do you do you find that more and more people are going, you know, I mean, are we approaching those times? Well, you know, the, the Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. So I'm not one to speculate, but uh, I've never seen as many people hope it's soon as there are hoping now. (laughs) Yeah. uh, uh, But I I think there's another thing to look at. In in the first chapter of the book of Romans, there's a verse, verse 18, that says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. No, No nation has ever held the truth and been unrighteous at the same time to the degree that the United States has, obviously founded on Christian values, founded on biblical principles. We've held the truth for the duration of our national identity, but we have held the truth increasingly in unrighteousness. And and the Bible says God's wrath will be revealed. And here's how it defines that wrath in that same chapter. God gave them over. That's a Greek term that means handing someone over to to sentence, to uh, execution, to jail or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. So God handed them over, and first of all, to uh, immorality. So the first way you know that a culture has been handed over by God is there will be a sexual revolution. And God says, I'm going to turn you over to the consequences of your evil choices. Two Mm -hmm. verses later, it says God gave them over to homosexuality. So when you see a sexual revolution followed by a homosexual revolution, you're, you're living Romans 1. The third statement is he gave them over to a reprobate mind. 
what I used to wonder, what is a reprobate mind, a mind that doesn't work? That's when you look at yourself and you're a man and you say, I'm a woman. That's insanity. And out of that insanity, it becomes impossible to go back because all rationality is gone. So I, I think what we're seeing in America is the wrath of God in Romans 1 revealed on a society, and the evidence of it is sexual revolution, homosexual revolution, followed by a reprobate mind, so, so that America kind of looks like the Jerry Springer show. It's just uh, deviation for the sake of entertainment. Um, and the chapter ends by saying, even though they know these things are wrong, they not only do them, but they approve them. They, they clap, they applaud at deviation and perversion. That's, that's a cyclical kind of thing. In, the Bible also says God has allowed all the nations to go their own way. So we're not the first nation gone, who's gone down this path. This is pretty much how history goes. So whether this is just our end or whether this is the apocalyptic end of everything, uh, I don't know, but certainly the wrath of God has been released on this country. It doesn't mean there's no grace. There is always grace. This is the day of salvation. Come to Christ. That's our message. Escape the wrath. Escape the judgment. And God will show you grace. But, um, but I think America wow. is experiencing that judgment. You don't hear people uh, say those things anymore, uh, John. Uh, and I appreciate your willingness to uh, stand up and say what you believe and, uh, and call your church back uh and uh and be willing to go to jail for the things that you believe are, are true thank you for being on the program john appreciate it